Lord Wallace of Saltair. I beg leave to ask the question, sending my name in the order paper. The Department for Science, Innovation and Technology takes the threat posed by disinformation in relation to the conflict extremely seriously. We are taking a three-pronged approach, working in lockstep with communities, technology companies and across government. The government is working to identify fake accounts, known as bots, working closely with social media companies to ensure the removal of illegal content and content which is in breach of their terms of service. Given the second question today, perhaps the Minister will confirm that much of the work of the unit is actually outsourced to an artificial intelligence company, uh, logically AI, which I understand is based in Yorkshire. Um, what I'm interested in is exactly how the output of the unit is conveyed to others. The Minister has, has confirmed that there is active interaction with social media companies. Um, there is an effort to identify the sources of this misinformation, many of which I understand are state actors, but some of them are individuals in this country and elsewhere. And what happens then when, when those sources have been identified? Who takes the action further? Indeed. Um, with respect to the use of logically AI, I'm going to have to write on to confirm what exactly their role is um, with that, I'm afraid. Um, following where, where um, the counter disinformation unit identifies uh, uh, disinformation being deployed at scale, um, it, it first of all would, would engage with the relevant ministry um, to, to um, allow them to, to make a response. Um, and uh, it will, on occasion, engage directly with the social media companies if the content they're seeing is either illegal or runs contrary to the terms of service declared by that company. My Lord, so there's been a huge rise in anti-Semitism and Islamophobia on the social media, much of it due to disinformation. Can I ask Your Majesty's Government, what steps do they take, are going to take to educate the public to spot disinformation and stop them forwarding it and repeating it? Um, my noble friend actually makes a, a really important point. I mean, in the, in the escalating battle between those um, pushing disinformation at us uh, and our attempts to limit it, media literacy is absolutely the key. Um, under the terms of the Online Safety Bill, which, as noble lords will know, is due to become law in just a few days, Ofcom are obliged to produce a media literacy strategy uh, to generate awareness and resilience to mis- and disinformation. They're obliged also to create an expert advisory committee on mis- and disinformation online. Um, there is, in addition now, a media literacy program fund that awards up to £700,000 of grant funding for media literacy programmes. All this is absolutely dependent on uh, platforms setting up clearly their terms of service so that users can, can uh, access the platforms in full knowledge of the kind of information they can expect to see. The EU Commission have formally opened an investigation into X, the, for the platform previously referred to as Twitter, to ensure it's complying with the Digital Services Act following the onslaught of the current conflict in Israel and Gaza, Palestine. So therefore, could the Noble Lord, the Minister, outline what discussions have taken place or what engagement has taken place with the European Commission in relation to the UK investigation and also the investigation in the European Commission? Well, I can um, tell the Noble Baroness that um, on October the 11th, very shortly, after the commencement of hostilities, uh, the Secretary of State for DSIT convened a meeting of uh, social media platforms. These included Google, YouTube, Meta, X, uh, uh, Snap and TikTok, um, and, and made very clear her expectation, uh, not only that illegal content would be rapidly and urgently removed, um, but that, that authoritative uh, uh, content would be promoted to, to Create um, more clarity as to as to what as to what content was accurate in this fast-moving and difficult uh, situation. Um, those meetings do are ongoing; they're daily at official level uh, and accompanied by detailed correspondence as to the acts of those um, platforms. My lords, 
Um, it, it's good to hear that the government is engaging with the social media platforms on this incredibly serious issue. Um, but uh, given that uh, eh, the, the renamed, the most aptly, I have to say, renamed X, um, I think then also without irony, uh, this is this is this is a an area one goes into uh, with great caution. It's distressing and nasty. Um, but given that they are currently laying off people, so I'm told, whose job it is to monitor and remove posts that deal with disinformation, uh, and taken also that although we have made progress uh, in, in, in looking at social media platforms, I suppose my question is what, what are we doing to require them to do this rather than simply engage with them? Um, well, I, I absolutely agree with the noble prelate about the seriousness and horror of, of the situation. In terms of requiring them to act, uh, the online safety bill, of course, becomes law in a matter of days, um, and that places much more rigorous requirements on the social media company uh, to, to remove content that is illegal, uh, to remove content that is harmful to children, um, and to have only content that is, is consistent with their published terms of service. Can I ask my friend what ministers are doing to engage with the leaders of the relevant religious communities to persuade their followers to avoid inflammatory actions and words which are causing such trouble in terms of inter-community tension? Um, yes, indeed. It really is an important part of the, uh, of the government's approach to this, uh, as I say, very, very difficult and nasty situation. But the Secretary of State um, met last week with leaders of, of Jewish communities. Um, there are ongoing meetings uh, convened by DLUC, um, similarly for all communities. Those communities, um, we are establishing bridges between them and the social media platforms. Um, and one uh, advantage they have in that dialogue is that they are accorded trusted flagger status, which greatly reduces the amount of time uh, it takes to raise content of concern. My Lords, my Lords, the House has previously debated the role and work of the Counter Disinformation Unit. I don't think anybody at the time was particularly convinced by the Noble Lord the Minister's assurances back in July. And these issues have been brought, obviously, into sharp focus uh, by recent events. We were promised uh, a meeting at the time of that last debate, and unless our front bench was left off the invite list, I'm not aware of the promised follow-up meeting having taken place. Given some of the Noble Lords' responses today, I think that meeting is now more urgent than ever. My Lords, can the Minister give a commitment today to meet with those of us who are deeply concerned about this issue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, indeed, uh, and uh, I remember very well the um, debate in, in July. Uh, I made a commitment then to meet with concerned members, and I'm happy to repeat that, but, but again, I do ask that concerned members write to me and indicate that they would like to meet. Those, uh, the, those that have, have met with me. Thank you. So they're coming into law of the online safety bill uh, very shortly. Uh, will he commit to setting up the advisory committee on disinformation and misinformation as soon as possible after that? Because it, it just doesn't the, cu the current situation <coughs> clearly demonstrate the need for that and for it to come to swift conclusions, my lords. Yeah, yeah. I, I very much share the noble lord's analysis of, of, of the need for, for that group to come into existence rapidly. It is, of course, the, the, um, the role of Ofcom to create it, but I will undertake to liaise with them to, to make sure it speeds up. There was a report that, in actual fact, the hospital had been hit. Immediately, sadly, in this modern day, modern media likes to break news, not to check how accurate it is. What I was going to ask the minister in practice, when we find that is exactly what's happened and the damage is done because it goes out through millions of people, billions of people, who wanted to believe that the Israelis did it and the damage is done. Um, uh, yes, indeed, that, that was very concerning. I mean, I'm um, unable to comment specifically on, on the role of the, the BBC reporting uh, on that, but, but I would say that, that it, of course, combines with other sources of mis- and disinformation online uh, to, to greatly amplify the, the damage that was done. 
uh, we continue, as I say, to work with the social media companies to ensure that they promote authoritative versions of the truth based on their use of, uh, of uh, fact checkers, whether third party independents or part of their own organisations. My Lords, that concludes oral questions for today.